This is All Things Considered from NPR News. I'm Robert Siegel. And I'm Michelle Norris. Some people collect stamps, others collect coins. Akin Fernandez collects recordings of shortwave radio stations, specifically number stations, mysterious broadcasts which often feature a droning voice reading a series of numbers. Fernandez has been obsessed with number stations for more than a decade. He's released a multiple CD set of his recordings of them. As Matt Cowan reports from London, the set has become a cult hit. London is a city that sleeps. Pubs shutter their doors at half past 11. The underground stops running at around midnight most nights. But it was in the early hours of the morning when Akin Fernandez found the sounds that would make for many sleepless nights to follow. If you were to come across that in the middle of the night by yourself, you would be more than scratching your head. You would be saying, what on earth have I just come across? So while the city slept, night after night, he searched the dial of his shortwave radio for more of these mysterious sounds. What you heard is precisely how the station presented itself. It didn't say where it was coming from or anything else. It's just bizarre. It's just completely bizarre. Akin Fernandez found plenty of number stations. What he couldn't find out was who or what was behind them. The more I tried to find out about number stations, the more questions came up. And the more people were almost didn't care. They almost didn't care about them. They said, oh, it's just, you know... Weather or something like that, weather transmissions, you know, they're nothing special. But obviously, not, they aren't weather transmissions. When the search for answers stalled, Fernandez tried to distinguish a pattern by keeping detailed logs of the frequencies and the times of the broadcasts. He also started recording them. I realized that people didn't have a Rosetta Stone to work with. They hadn't been archived anywhere. At the time, Fernandez was running an independent record company and decided to put out a CD of number stations recordings. The Connet project became four CDs. Internet friends contributed their own recordings. The finished product has more than 150 tracks, each one a separate broadcast, numbers being read out in English, Czech, German, Russian, sometimes by children, sometimes by computers. Somehow, his arcane obsession found an audience. Thousands of copies were sold through niche retailers on both sides of the Atlantic. Filmmaker Cameron Crowe, best known for his movies Jerry Maguire and Almost Famous, is a fan. This is one of the great strange and strangely beautiful, odd recordings. There's something about the sound of the voices or even the music box type recordings that just change any room you're in when you're hearing it, changes your frame of mind, takes you to another place. That's exactly the feel Crow was hoping to get in the psychological drama Vanilla Sky. With Fernandez's blessing, Crow mixed cuts from the Connet project into the film's soundtrack. Where is she? The excerpts underscore scenes when the Tom Cruise character is thrust between realities. When the woman he thought was dead turns up in his bed and the woman he loves is nowhere to be seen, he loses it. I'm Sophia. (laughs) Director Cameron Crowe says these scenes unsettle audiences thanks in large part to the soundtrack. He still enjoys introducing people to the recordings to see their response. I played it for a friend of mine, and they were like, I feel creepy, take that off. And then I said, here, check this out, and played the Yankee Hotel Foxtrot recording. And they were like, wow, that's the Wilco title. It's my father's voice drilling up, sailor sailing off in the morning.
The band Wilco incorporated sounds from the Connet project into its breakthrough 2002 release, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Cameron Crowe says the growing fascination with this mysterious found sound is understandable. He says he introduced Steven Spielberg to the recordings. And it was that thing where you're just kind of passing a little secret thing on to somebody else. And in current times where everything in pop culture is explored and overexplored, it's great that there's this little corner that you can often say to somebody, hey, have you heard about the Conan Project? And even somebody like Spielberg is suddenly going, tell me more about this. A number of people want to know more. Simon Mason, author of the book Secret Signals, says officially number stations remain a mystery. Various madcap theories have come out of the years, like it's messages from UFOs or it's messages between drug running people or some outlandish things like that. And the evidence boils down to the fact that they are transmitting messages to espionage agents in, in the field uh, in foreign countries. Both Mason and Akin Fernandez say the case of Erwin Van Harlem is proof of the espionage theory. The Czech agent was caught in the act of receiving a coded message when police raided his London apartment in 1988. The code was written in groups of five numbers. They found several pads with the keys to the codes hidden in bars of soap. The man, who was posing as a Dutch art dealer, was convicted of spying and deported. NPR contacted the CIA about number stations, but the agency declined to comment. Fernandez says the most revealing statement about the stations came from an official at the British Department of Trade and Industry after the Connet project was first released. And basically they said they are what you think they are, and they're not for public consumption. Three years ago, it seemed that the Connet project would be silenced. Fernandez was so burnt out and broke that he decided to take a break. The story would have likely ended there if it wasn't for Wilco. The band, unlike filmmaker Cameron Crowe, failed to ask Fernandez for permission to use his recording. He sued and the record company settled for an undisclosed sum. Fernandez restarted his label and repressed the Connet project. He says the new run is nearly sold out and he would like to expand the project. The Cold War is over. There must be people who have this information and I want, to, I want to speak to them, I want to publish their diaries, I want to publish their photographs, I want to publish their evidence. He says his reason is simple. Well, let's just leave it at this. When people don't know what their governments are doing, bad things happen. Very bad things happen. For NPR News, I'm Matt Cowan in London.